Story time about why I will never go Black Friday shopping ever again. So a little background information. I was 13 and in eighth grade. And my best friends and I were super excited because we'd never been back Friday shopping before. So we had a plan that all of us would spend the night at my house and my mom would drive us to the mall at four in the morning. So fast forward, it's four in the morning and my friends and I are ready to go to the mall and my mom came with us, but we didn't stay with her the whole time. So as we were walking to the first store, we realized that there were these three guys behind us that have kind of been following us around since we got into the mall. But we just think it's a coincidence because you know it's Black Friday, the mall is packed. There are obviously going to be people going the same exact way as us. So we go into the first store, we get what we want to get, and the men didn't follow us in there. But as we're making our way to the next store, we realize that they're following us again. It was like they waited outside the first store for us to come out. So then we decided that we were going to walk around one of the kiosks a few times to see if they were really following us. And of course they were, so we went into another store and they didn't follow us in that one either. So I go up to one of the workers and I ask if they could possibly like call security or something. Because there are these guys following us and she said, yeah, like for part two. Part two about why I will never go Black Friday shopping ever again. So like I said, my friends and I go into the one store and of course they don't follow us in there. So we ask an employee if they can call security. So whenever security got there, I told them that these guys have been following us around since we got into the mall. And then security's like, well, where's your mother? Acting like it was our fault that we could be kidnapped for not being with my mom. So after that, he's like, all right, just go find your mom. You know, I'll talk to them. So I call my mom and I'm like, hey, where are you? Of course, she's on the whole other side of the mall. So my friends and I are going to meet her on the other side of the mall. And we look back to see if the security guard was talking to them. And literally the security guard just walked out of the store and went the complete opposite way. So then we walk up to the security guard and we're like, you didn't even talk to him. And then he turns around, rolls his eyes, goes over and starts talking to these guys. And then we continue to the store that my mom was at whenever we decided to stop at Starbucks to get something to drink. So after 10 minutes of waiting in line, you know, we turn around and we see these guys standing at the end of the line, just staring at us. So we get out of line and we decided to just go straight to the store that my mom was at. And when we got there, we told her what was going on. So she was like, okay, let me get these few things and then we can leave. Like for part three. Part three about why I will never ever go Black Friday shopping ever again. So like I said, we got out of line and we went straight to the store that my mom was at. And she was like, okay, just let me get these few things and then we can leave. So we start walking towards the exit and then I'm like, mom, they're still following us. So she turns around and she realizes they're literally standing two feet behind us. So we decided to go into one of the stores and we asked one of the employees if they could also call the head of security. And whenever head of security got there, she literally tore them a new you know what. After that, my mom tries to go and point out the guys and they're not standing there anymore. So they're like, well, what do you want us to do? And then my my mom's like well you can walk us out to our car so they walk us out to our car and then they stand there while we're getting in my mom starts the car and she starts backing up and we literally run over something and all of a sudden we hear like screaming and moaning and the security guards look under the car and literally one of the guys who was following us is literally laying under our cars with a knife and as soon as that happened there was literally a van parked right across from our car the van drove away really fast but the police ended up catching up to it and they found like eight girls in that van Story time about my extremely creepy neighbors. So a little background information, I was 12 years old and I was in sixth grade. And my family and I lived in a really small town where everyone knew everyone. But our new neighbors had been building their house next to us for the past four years. And finally, when they were done with the house, this house was huge. I mean, probably because there were like eight people moving into the house. There was the mom, the dad, four kids, and their grandparents. So like eight people. But I was super excited because I was like, okay, this is awesome. I get to meet some new friends. But after two weeks of not seeing anybody playing in the backyard or anybody on the school bus, I started to think that their family was super weird. And everyone in our neighborhood liked to gossip. And everyone was saying how they barely see the people who had just moved in. So my mom decided to take one for the team and make some brownies, take them over to the house. And I ended up going with her. So we go up to the house, we knock on the door. And one of the kids came and opened the door, but the dad ran over and grabbed him. Like for part two. Part two about my extremely creepy neighbors. So like I said, my mom and I took some brownies over there and one of the kids opened the door and when he opened the door, he had a bunch of bruises all over his body. The dad came running over and ripped his son from the door and slammed the door in our faces. And all you could hear was him screaming at his son. So my mom and I went to walk away before the door opened. And he was like, sorry, my son knows better than to open the door to strangers. So he took the brownies and then I asked him if I could have a sleepover with one of his daughters. And he was super hesitant at first, but he said that I could only have a sleepover with her if it was at my house and not theirs. Which my mom was completely completely fine with anyways because she thought that it was a little bit weird that his son had bruises covering his whole body so that night when she came over to sleep over my house i asked her how her brother got all those bruises all over his body and she said that he just fell down some stairs but after that we became best friends and we would literally hang out like five times a week until the one day i knocked on their door to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone like for part three
Part three about my super creepy neighbors. So like I said, I became best friends with their daughter, but the one day I went over her house to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone. And when I asked when she would be back, he was like, she went to go live with her mom. So probably never, which was super weird because she never mentioned that she had another mom. So fast forward two months, my family and I are sitting around the fire pit when we hear someone scream help, but we weren't sure if that's what we were actually hearing because it was so quiet. And then all of a sudden we heard someone banging on my neighbor's basement door. You know, those metal doors that people usually have outside of their house that lead down basement steps yeah well that's where the banging was coming from so my dad hopped over the fence to see if that's where the screaming was coming from also and then not even a minute later my dad hopped back over the fence and it looked like he saw a ghost but he ran inside called 911 because I was so young, the only thing my parents told me about that whole situation was that the girl that I was friends with was still alive and her parents were keeping her in the basement along with two of her other siblings. But then we also found out that they weren't even her real parents. They were kidnapped at the hospital when they were born. Story time about the scariest night of my life. A lot of background information. So the one weekend, my sister and I decided that we were going to go to my stepdad's and her best friend was going to come also. I was around 13 at the time. Well, my stepdad and my mom had been broken up for about a few months, but my dad was okay with us going to our stepdad's because he had been with our mom for around seven years and he's always been good to us. And my stepdad's was two hours away. So fast forward, we get to his house and my sister and her friend wanted to go to a party. Now me being older now, I knew that they didn't want to bring me because they were around 16 and I was only 13. But I still tried to tag along. Well, they weren't really talking to me or anything. And I hadn't seen my mom in almost a year. So I told my stepdad that I wanted to go and see her, which was a super big deal because she absolutely hated my stepdad and she didn't want him around us. And by the way, she lived like five minutes from him. So if she found out that we went all the way up there to see him and not her, she would have flipped. So he drives me to my mom's house like for part two. Part two about the worst night of my life. So before I got to my mom's house, I called her and I pretty much just told her that I was with my stepdad and I wanted to come see her. Like I said, she lived five minutes away. So as soon as we pull up, she walks outside and she starts screaming at my stepdad. She's like, those are my kids. You're not allowed to see them, blah, blah, blah. Even though my dad had full custody and he could decide who we could and couldn't see. So after that, we walk in the house. She isn't saying anything. And this house is pretty much like a trap house. There was a knife holding the door shut not a kitchen knife like an actual knife that you stab people with she's like you can sit down make yourself comfortable and i didn't want to sit down because i saw needles everywhere and i just saw a rat crawl under the couch so i was like no i'm fine and then she was like sorry not everybody can be rich like you which just to make clear i'm not rich i just knew that she was doing drugs with her boyfriend in that house after that she pulls the knife that was holding the door shut out and points it right at me like for part three Part three about the worst night of my life. So before she points the knife at me, she had been in the kitchen, right? So I went to go and sneak out the door. That's whenever she ran over, ripped the knife out of the door and pointed it right at me. And she's like screaming a bunch of at me. And she's like, oh, what are you going to tell your dad that I pointed a knife at you? And I told her, yeah, like, what do you mean? Am I not going to tell him? So at this point, she tries to take my phone. I told her, no, you're not taking my phone. And at this time, my sister's also texting me and yelling at me because she had told me that I should not go to my mom's house. Probably for that exact reason. A few minutes later, she hears her boyfriend pull up. I had never met her boyfriend. Like I said, I haven't seen her in probably almost a year. As soon as she hears him pull up, she looks at me and she says, go out the back door. She literally hurries up, takes me to the back door, and I have to run out the back door. I don't even know where I am. My sister and stepdad were waiting at the gas station across the street so i ran over there really quickly and then a few things happened after that let me know if you guys want a part four part four about the worst night of my life just a little side note i am in bed so it's going to be a black screen and you can probably hear my dog snoring i'm just going to go from my point of view the rest of the time because i texted my sister but i think she's sleeping so pretty much i had to call my sister after my mom told her to go out the back door and there was a sheet right across from where she was but since she had to go out the back she just saw like all woods and no gas station so i got on the phone with her she runs over to the gas station and when we get back to my stepdad's house we call our dad and let him know what happened and the police actually got involved and they had called my dad because my mom had called them and told him a bunch of stuff that just wasn't true. Like saying that my stepdad was a pedophile and stuff. Just like saying stuff that could actually ruin this man's life. And usually my stepdad would come pick us up and then drop us back off. But the police said that my dad had to come get us tomorrow morning. Even though he had full custody and could decide who we could go with and stuff. So my dad came the next day and picked us up.
You know that unspoken rule about when you walk into the classroom and you see a sub-teacher at the desk? And you all just collectively decide that you get to sit wherever you want since that teacher doesn't know the seating arrangement. Well, there is always that one annoying little rat called Aiden or Timothy who comes into the room and snitches on the person in their seat. And it is always the same kid that tells the teacher that they forgot to set us homework. Like, can 